Hello, Mrs. Neumeyer back again for our probability. Now, this is our last week of our science projects, and today we're going to be talking about statistics. Statistics is a way of organizing all of our data so that other people can also understand it. We're going to be going over a few pieces of grammar, some vocabulary words, and we're going to be recording some of our own data. Now, or some data that actually comes from a chart. On page 272 in our foundations guide is a list of data points for Bigfoot sightings. <laughs> yes, Bigfoot sightings. Now, Bigfoot is known as a mythical creature, pretend, not real, but people sometimes think they get a glimpse of him in the forest and out in places like that. So this is a record of the different number of people who have had sightings of Bigfoot organized according to state. So state by state. So each of you will get a copy of this body of data and we're going to be putting it together in some ways that we can understand the data and how it compares to each other. So I'm going to use the example that's in the book using the New England states. Now you're welcome to choose whatever group of states you want to do. Maybe you want to do it wherever you are, like in the Pacific Northwest where we are here. You can choose Oregon, Washington, maybe um, include Alaska in there, Montana, Idaho, Wyoming. Go ahead and pick your set of, set of states that you want to use the data for and we're going to be putting this data together. Now I have some charts here where I'm going to be recording my data. You can use it on a sheet like this, or you can just use a blank piece of paper and draw your own, or maybe you want to use graph paper. All of those are good options. So first, statistics is the study of a collection and the analysis and the interpretation and the presentation and the organization of data. So that's what we're going to do first. We're going to look at our data and we're going to talk about a few things. Now, the first one is called mode. Have you heard that word before? Mode is the value that has the highest frequency. So we're going to look through here and see which number do we see that occurs more than once. Hmm. Let's see, I see Delaware with five sightings, Rhode Island with five sightings. That to me looks like the one that occurs the most. Okay, so that would be the mode. The mode, I would say, is five. All right, next we're going to find the mean and the median. First, let's work with median. Right. And in order to do so, we're going to do the we're going to use the data for the New England states. Now, when you do it, you can choose whatever states you want to. But in order to find our median, it is the middle value after we line them all up from lowest to highest. So we need to first line them up from lowest to highest. So we take our lowest number on this one. Which one is it? Okay, it's five. And we're going to go up to the highest. So what's our next highest one? The nine from Vermont. All right. And what's our next highest? Twelve. And then it goes sixteen. And then seventeen. I'm going to stop right there. Let's imagine that we weren't going to include this in our data for now. It makes median a little bit easier to find because we're going to find the middle number. And when you have an odd set of data, it's a little bit easier because it you can find that middle number. What I like to do is kind of keep track of it by crossing out as I go. So, right, these are the outermost numbers. Okay, the next set is here. Oh, and I'm able to find what is my middle number. And in this case, it's 12. That would be our median. The middle value in the set of statistical values that are arranged from ascending or descending order. So, that would be 12. The median in this case would be 12. You might say, well, what happens if we do have an even amount of data like we did here? If I, if I get this back with our Massachusetts back in there, there's 33. We put that at the end, right? That's our highest number. So now 
if we count them down, if we go try to find the middle, uh-oh, we've got these two numbers here in the middle now. What do we do? Well, we find the average of these two numbers, which we'll talk a little bit more when we talk about mean. But for now, let, I'll go ahead and show you. We'll take 16 plus 12, add those together, we get 28. And when we find an average of something, we divide it by the number of data points that we had. In this case, one, two, divide it by two. So our number is going to be 14. 14 would be our median in this case, which would be our middle number. Now, if you didn't follow all that, that's okay. As you get older, you'll learn more about average and how to, how to figure it out. But for now, we'll just remember median is our middle number. Okay, next we're going to talk about mean. Now, just like we did before, we're going to find an average, but we're going to be using all of the numbers to get our mean, because mean is like the average. So we'll add all these numbers up, come up with our total, and divide it by the number that we have here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So there's six values. So we'll add those up, divide it by six, and that gets us the mean. Okay, so now you know a little bit more about mean, median, and mode. And we're going to do some more things with our data. Next, we're going to take our data charts and we're going to plot our data on a bar graph and a line graph. So after you decide which data set you're going to use, we're going to put it on our chart. So let me show you how that works. All right, I have chosen Maine, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island, and Vermont. So that I'm going to label down here at the bottom. So this is Maine. All right, so I've labeled those along the bottom for each of the states. That is means that right here is going to be the value for Maine, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, going across here. Now, the lines up this direction are going to be the number of sightings. So we have the location along the bottom, and on this side, we're going to have the number of sightings. So let's look at our data chart and let's start with Maine. How many sightings did Maine have? 17, right? Well, let me label my column here and we're going to do it by fives. You guys remember skip counting by fives? I bet you do. All right, so this line will be five. I'm going to go 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, now, depending on your data, the scale might differ. You might differ. You might need to go by 20s or, you know, if you have a really high one in order to fit it all on here. I'll let you guys decide how you're going to label that based on the group of data you have. Now, Maine had 17 sightings. So in my bar chart, I'm going to go up to 17. I'll go to the 15 and a little bit higher in between the 15 and 20 is 17. I'm going to make a line there and I'm going to color it in and say, all right, Maine had 17 sightings. All right, let's compare it to the next one. New Hampshire and H was 16. Ooh, just under. And so that's going to be, I'm going to draw my line and I'm going to color it in and we are making a bar graph to graph the number of sightings in these locations. Here, let me label it too. We've got number of sightings along there that tells us what we are, what measurement we're talking about here. Okay, Massachusetts 33. Okay, so that's going to be up here. Make a line and color that in. All right. See where we're going with this? We're making this bar chart to show how each of our pieces of data compare. And it organizes it in a really nice and easy to read fashion. Right, so we've got three more here. Connecticut, Rhode Island, and Vermont. 
I'll go ahead, go ahead and put those bar graphs on here and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, my bar graph is complete. Now you'll see I put the Connecticut with 12 sightings. Rhode Island had five sightings and Vermont had nine. And you can look at our bar graph now. Say I was doing a presentation or say I was I had a poster of, of what my data was talking about. I could present it this way and you could really quickly look at it. And if I said to you, or if you were thinking, hmm, I wonder which of those had the least number of sightings. You could look and you could say, ooh, really quickly. You could see it with your eyes here that this was the smallest. And you could look there and say, oh, that's Rhode Island had the smallest number here with five sightings. You could say, ooh, which one had the most? Oh, right here, that's Massachusetts had the most. So bar graphs are a really great way of recording our data like that. Now, another way of doing it is a line graph. And so I'm going to use another piece of these paper, another piece that looks just like it, and going to record the data in a similar way, but making a line graph. So let me show you how that looks. Okay, I've labeled my chart with the states just like I did on the other bar chart. I labeled my data, my, title, my numbers here the, uh, for the numbers of sightings. And I even put my title here at the top of what is this chart going to be about. So if someone looks at it, they can say, okay, Bigfoot sightings in New England. Great, so let's chart this out as a data, as a, a line graph now, just like we did on our bar chart. We're going to look at our data and we're starting with Maine, 17. So instead of making a bar in a line there, I'm going to make a dot. So here's our Maine. I'm going to make a dot here on this line here. So we've got Maine up there. I put my dot there. All right, so New Hampshire was 16, so I'm going to put the dot where the 16 would be. Massachusetts was 33, put the dot there, and Connecticut, Rhode Island, and Vermont. I'll go ahead and put those in as well, and I'll show you what that looks like. All right, Rhode Island was 5, and then Vermont was 9. Okay, I've got my dots. Now I'm going to connect the dots to make my line graph. Okay, here's my line graph. Again, we can see what the lowest and the highest is, right? And we can see how the data relates to one another. Can you find the lowest based on my line graph? Yeah, right here. Can you find the highest? Yep, right there. So line graph is also a great way to display your data so that you can show it in a nice, organized way, easy for people to understand. All right, now you'll be able to give those a try with your data, but the last one I want to show you is a pie chart. Now you don't have to do this one, um, but this just so you're familiar with how this works, I'm going to show you. So I'm going to start by making a pie shape. It's supposed to be round. Didn't quite get there, but that's okay. And if you were to make a pie graph with your data, you would do the same thing uh, I, um, using showing how it compares to one another basically now in our data we had it was uh which state was it massachusetts had 33 so that's going to have a big chunk of the pie right and then we had new hampshire and maine were pretty close to each other so they're going to take up another section of the pie but not quite as much. So basically this represents the 33, the data of 33. And in, in, in pie charts, a lot of times you'll see them color different colors. This is New Hampshire, and this was Maine. This was our Massachusetts with a lot of data. And then the remaining part is going to be the rest of them. Connecticut, which had a little bit less, so it should be a little bit smaller than those. And then the others remaining were even smaller. So this was our smallest one, right? With the five, that was Rhode Island. And then this would be the Vermont. Now, I didn't do them quite very accurate. I did it pretty quickly here. But when you were actually doing a pie chart, you would want to make it nice and accurate. So you could see very visually, Rhode Island had the smallest and Massachusetts had the most and how the other ones compare. Another way of showing your data when you're doing statistics. All right, so now you're going to have your chance. You're going to look at your data, put it together, make your bar graphs, make your line graphs, and you'll be 
putting together your data just like scientists do, just like we do when we organize data, when we try to communicate our ideas about the observations we've made and the data that we've collected so that others too can read your data, understand it, and make some conclusions, draw conclusions about it as well. All right, well, that wraps up our probability unit. Had a, such a great time. Now, I hope you can remember this as you're learning about the origins of how the Earth began and other things. And when you hear the words odds or unlikely or likely or probable or all these different things, you can say, oh, I know what they're talking about. But most importantly, I hope that it reveals more to you about our Creator God and how amazing it is that he created all these complex things that could have never happened on their own. Enjoy your studies, and I'll see you again. Bye-bye.